Hey everyone, this is George Cross, and we're going back to another episode of Mindset Monday. But on Sunday. So uh, this is uh, the second episode of the Mindset Monday series. I'm doing a little mini series. It's season five. This is episode two. And last week, uh, the episode focused on the notion of effort and what it looks like. And what I've been doing uh, for these podcasts, the notes that I'm writing is I've taken um, the book, The Growth Mindset Coach by Annie Brock and Heather Hunley, and there was a, a chart in the book that talked about you know different scenarios and what the fixed mindset would look like and what the growth mindset would look like in situation. And in my book that I wrote with my good friend, Katie Novak, Innovate Inside the Box, you can see that link down below. Um, I actually expanded the, the chart and I added a concept for the innovator's mindset. And as a quick reminder, the innovator's mindset is defined as this, belief that abilities, intelligence, and talents are developed so they lead to the creation of new and better ideas. So if you are, if you didn't hear the first episode of this season of Mindset Monday, <laughs> go back and, and check out that link because it'll kind of give you some context of, of what I'm actually doing. And as I mentioned, the first week I talked about effort and what does it look like with a growth mindset and how do we actually expand effort into the concept of the innovator's mindset. And in this week, I am focusing on the idea of obstacles. And in Brock and Hunley's chart, when they talked about obstacles in context of the growth mindset, they shared this idea of showing perseverance in the face of obstacles and setbacks is a common response. So being able to kind of be resilient, um, you know, when when you're dealing with adversity, which totally makes sense. How do we develop that in ourselves? How do we model it for our kids and for our students? And so how I actually expanded that in Innovate to the Box with the, the focus of what is what does obstacles look like in the concept of the innovator's mindset is I shared when obstacles arise, the thinking has shifted to look for opportunities and possibilities. So it's not just about dealing with adversity, it's about, and I'll talk about this more, bouncing forward. Seeing obstacles and adversity as an opportunity to grow and get better. And what can we actually learn from that situation? If you really think about the the, the term innovate inside the box, it's understanding that we, we deal with constraints, we deal with tough situations and how do we leverage those situations to not only make ourselves better, but make those around us better as well. And for my own mentality and for my own thinking, uh, I, I try to do, and I've been doing this with all the Mindset Mondays, is kind of think about how do I, how do I define this in the notion of a uh, personal um, opportunity and a professional opportunity. So the, the first notes that I wrote down is when I'm actually working out and um, when I'm, whether it's running, lifting weights, I try to get to the point where I am out of breath, I'm exhausted. And that's where you really find growth. And I remember listening to uh, this gentleman talking about weightlifting. He said that he has certain appreciation for people that, um, maybe we're built a certain way in the sense that he knew that to get to that point, you actually have to push yourself where a lot of people would quit, where you'd want to give up. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying push yourself to the point of injury or doing something, you know, really tough, but it's kind of when you feel you can't do another rep where you feel you can't run any harder. It's finding that extra gear and gear if you weightlift this that's not in this but there's a slang for that too uh it's finding that extra gear to actually push yourself and that's where you find growth that's where you actually find growth when you are just doing things where you feel comfortable that's where you may be maintained but if you do that for too long you actually regress age catches up you know to us so getting to a place where you're pushing yourselves in your workout just to the point where it doesn't hurt, where you don't actually feel struggle, then you actually will start regressing backwards. And so I was kind of thinking about that. And 
sometimes uh, we initiate change, but sometimes change is thrust upon this. And when I looked at this concept of obstacles, I'm thinking about like, how have I modeled that in some ways in my life? And the easy one, and it's for everyone listening to went through the same thing. Like literally everyone went through the same thing was COVID. And when I looked at COVID, my life, and I share this with groups often, is my life, like everyone else's life, had changed. But the way my life had changed was I was speaking, and, you know, speaking entails traveling. And all of a sudden, nobody's traveling anywhere. So I looked at all the events I was about to speak at, and this is how I make a living, being canceled. And I remember being really upset by it and thinking, what am I going to do? This is going to be horrible. And then... Literally getting up the next day and thinking, you know, I literally wrote the book on innovation and how to deal with change. And if I can't figure this out, what does that say about me? So I started looking at what are some things that I've always wanted to do and what are some things that I really want to change in my professional life? So I started creating some different opportunities, things that I still utilize today because of COVID. I just didn't say, well, hey, this is really tough. Let's just get through it. And to be honest with you, in some situations with some families, some people getting through it was the best way of dealing with that obstacle. And I understand that. And I feel blessed that, you know, I don't know anyone that I lost a COVID or anything like that. And I can't even imagine how hard that is. But really kind of actually um, thinking about how I get better in these situations. And, you know, I kind of pause there for a second because these these podcasts, I have a couple notes that are written, but I I try to, you know, speak from the heart and share things that come to my mind as I'm going. And when I said, you know, I didn't lose anybody, I actually do remember how hard it was when I lost my dad. And this is might sound weird, but when I when I lost my dad, it was traumatizing I'm you know I'm still struggling with it to be honest and it's over 10 years since that actually happened and I remember I was um you know I had a couple events that I canceled that were you know during the time of the funeral but I had an event maybe 10 days after and I you know it it sounds cliche I know my dad would have wanted me to work he would have wanted me to kind of continue to live my life and, and you know make him proud and I remember um, it was actually in Philadelphia. I was with a, uh, a school that I'm still friends with, one of the, the people that brought me in uh, from that. And we built a friendship because, because of that situation. And they all knew my dad had passed away. And what I actually did on that day is I shared about my dad and I shared about the impact and how he helped me view education. And this is the... For me, it was the worst situation I ever faced was losing my dad. Still feels that way to this day. And how I saw this horrible situation is that I really can let my father live through me through these stories that I share. And how how much better to how how much more proud would he be of me if I say, here are the things I learned from dad, my dad, and here's how I applied them. And if I can share that message. So I, I've had, I've had a lot of people who come up to me and say, you know, I just lost my, my, my mom, my dad, and it's been really hard. And the thing that I say to them is that one of the things that the way that I honor my, my father is by letting his, his story be shared through me and taking such a horrible situation and trying to make something positive out of it is something that, um, I learned honestly from my parents, you know, they, they went through, um, they, they, they immigrated to a new country with nothing and they made an incredible, incredible life and they actually went to seek out uh, obstacles. So it's just kind of a mindset that um, I, I learned from my mom and dad. You know, they could have stayed comfortable where they're at, but they said, hey, let's let's take this risk. And like they actually went to seek out obstacles to make a better way uh, uh, of life. And so... <laughs> As I'm thinking about this and making that connection to my dad, which I wasn't planning on doing, I've thought about when, um, how do we look at obstacles and creating those new possibilities? And the first first thing I thought about is sometimes we talk about creating something new, but I also think about how do you create a new version of yourself? 
And years ago, I was really struggling in my job. Um, I, I was working at a school and I wasn't really happy and it wasn't the school, it wasn't the people there. In fact, I'm friends with many of the people to this day. It was just a situation. I, I didn't really like what I was teaching. I, I felt that I was being underutilized. And I also didn't want to live in the town that I was living at. I was younger and um, it was a very small town. And I, I just wanted to move to a, a bigger center. And I committed that if I didn't find a job uh, in education in a new school district in the new city, that I was just going to quit teaching. And basically the last minute... Uh, of that school year, I had found a new job, but it was only a temporary position. And I remember thinking about how, how hard it was to get that job and how much I struggled. And also kind of not being really into education because of, I just didn't like what I was teaching, right? I wasn't passionate about the content and I just kind of, my enthusiasm and passion had, had died down. And so when I went to this new place and you know, this is a new opportunity. It's a new obstacle because I'm not guaranteed anything. It's a perm or it's a temporary contract. I'm covering someone's maternity leave. I remember going into it and saying, I am never going to be in a situation where I feel I have to fight for a job like that ever again. I'm going to create my a new version of myself. So as I go into this new position, not knowing anybody, not them not knowing me, I think, well, if they don't know me, I can create a totally new version of myself. And so it went down to not only my attitude that I brought every single day to that work, it was even I, I, I dressed in a totally different way. Um, I went out and I would seek people that were in central office saying, hey, I would love to offer um, my expertise in different areas. And if you have anything, I'm glad to volunteer and putting my name out there. And that was noticed very quickly. So that to me is that I, I went looking for those challenges. I went looking for those those obstacles and people appreciate about that and uh, that about me. And not only did it really kind of elevate me in the eyes of others who didn't know me, it, it also elevated myself in, in my own eyes because I did not recognize who I was from a year prior. I was so committed to my work. I was so passionate about education. And to think that I went from a situation where I didn't even want to teach to, I, I can't imagine being in a field outside of education now it really is remarkable. But it started with me kind of seeking out um, those opportunities. And I, I would consider myself a pretty optimistic person. And I, I like to think that I have a very positive outlook on life. And it doesn't mean that I ignore negative things, but it's I'm always looking for solutions. And I was reading a book recently, I've mentioned it on the podcast before. And it's basically, it's by Trevor Moad, and it's talking about neutral thinking. And when you deal with something, instead of just kind of being down on your luck and thinking about how hard things are, the first thing that I think about is, um, okay, what does this situation require of me? That is actually, um, that's something I kind of picked up from that book is here's the situation. Yeah, it sucks. Saying it sucks doesn't make it not suck. <laughs> what do I have to do in the situation to fix it? So I, I, I mentioned this in an earlier podcast that I did on, the, on the, my book review on, on uh, Trevor Moad's book talking about that and whether you use the term neutral thinking I kind of see it as positive thinking and positive thinking for me is not ignoring tough situations but finding a, a, a way to move forward you know and that to me when you move forward it is in a positive direction uh, his terminology neutral thinking I think can be embraced by a lot of schools and, and uh, you know people in general I, I think it's really powerful that idea of like what does the situation require of me you that's where you start to grow and you start to actually develop and one of the things that I do with as a dad and I think about this with my daughter Clea Clea you know she'll have some rough goes she'll have some rough days and she's a wonderful kid she's absolutely amazing and I don't I feel bad for saying this I'm a I'm a very empathetic father you know I care about my kids but my whole mentality is getting them in situations where they can deal with adversity on their own, where they look at these opportunities um, moving forward. And so, yeah, of course, I'm going to care for my kids. They're going to know that I love them no matter what. 
but when, you know, and Clea is older, she's the only one who can really understand this of my kids at this point, you know, because of her age, I'll say, okay, that was a tough situation. What did you learn from this? Like, what did you learn that you're going to do moving forward? And that was something that I did as an administrator. You know, I really wanted my students who would be sent to the office, would get in trouble to say, okay, what would you do if you're me? Because it was the connection of like, how do you solve your own problems? And looking at when you face adversity, it is about moving forward and getting better. It's not just kind of dealing with it as it comes to you and making sure you get through it. It's actually about getting better through the process. And how I'm going to end this podcast is by a quote by Donna Volpita. And I shared this in Innovate Inside the Box. And definitely check out the book. I know that it's going to, if you're if these podcasts are resonating with you, I know you're going to really appreciate the book. Um, but it's such a powerful quote. And I thought about this uh, during COVID. I thought about this, you know, after COVID. And it's something I've really embraced. And Donna Volpita shares this. Uh, today resilience has a much broader meaning for researchers and professionals working with kids it's not just about bouncing back it's about bouncing forward resilience doesn't just mean getting back to normal after facing a difficult situation it means learning from the process in order to become stronger and better at tackling the next challenge and so when you look at the term obstacles and you think about this in the idea of the innovator's mindset it's not just about getting through it. It's about growing through it. And that to me is so imperative, not only for our students, but for ourselves. And it's something I truly tried to embrace, try to model, just thinking about in these different situations, how do I face adversity and come out better on the other side? What did I learn from the situation? How will I apply it so I can grow and get better? And how can I bounce forward as Donna Lupita shares? So thank you for joining me for another episode of Mindset Monday on Sunday. I look forward to sharing with you next week, uh, the third one. But thanks again for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day.